Howdy, howdy, y'all. Happy Thursday. It is great to be here. Good to be good to be back and good to be joined by Larry Hudson. Larry, good morning. Good morning. Um, We've got the crossover of uh, Australian morning time and Texas afternoon. Yes, it was. It worked out surprisingly well. Um, quite, quite happy with how that uh, worked out. Um, we were we were planning ahead of time, and we basically had to invent the word through Friday just to be able to talk about this weird intersection. Um, but we made it. We got you on, um, and you're here. So uh, howdy, howdy. Great um, to be here. Great to have you on. Uh, so for folks who haven't seen you yet, uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm a web developer based in uh, Melbourne, Australia. Um, I work at the uh, the Information Access Group, which is a uh, fairly small communications agency that specialises in accessible communications. So um, accessible documents, um, accessible websites, um, and a lot of uh, making information easier to understand. So a lot of the work that I've been doing has uh, involved accessible documents and sharing information online in an accessible way. Good deal. Um, and I think that document accessibility is like, this is something that has interested me for a bit because um, like, I, I, I don't have any experience with it. I have purely just, you know, uh, been working with web accessibility. And so one of the things I'm incredibly curious about is how is doc, uh, document accessibility like, how does it compare to web accessibility? Is it similar? Is it dissimilar? Um, I would say that a lot of web accessibility guidelines, say in uh, WCAG, um, would apply to document accessibility as well. So you could see document accessibility as maybe a bit of a subset of um, web content accessibility guidelines. Um, and most of the principles that we apply to web accessibility would also apply to documents. Um, I guess if you're working with documents, say PDFs or Word documents, um, it's a little bit simpler than web accessibility because you're working with sort of like a fixed page size. Um, so there are certain limitations to what you can do with a document which okay. makes it a little bit simpler but also makes it limited in terms of the user experience so mm. yeah there's that sort of overlap um yeah we'll talk about that a little bit later in terms of um html and pdf comparing those in terms of accessibility yeah, because like you, with HTML, I think of like you've got things like button elements and, you know, detail summary, things you can do there to have some degree of interaction. But documents, PDF documents especially, don't really have that beyond hyperlinks, what I understand. Yeah. Um, so less interaction accessibility and more content structure accessibility, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it is um, possible to add interactive form fields to a PDF um, and incorporate them into the tags of the PDF so that um, you can have that sort of, you can fill out a PDF form and then save it, but then you've got to go and email it to someone or something like that. So yeah, the limitations compared to something like HTML and JavaScript. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the the accessibility and the interactivity sort of feel like they're bolted on to PDF because PDF wasn't originally created with those in mind. Um, yeah, the the main priority with the PDF document format is taking a print document and having a consistent digital format of that print document. Um, that's the main sort of priority with PDF. Yeah. Yeah. Thinking about it as like something that was kind of, I guess, back formed from print is, is interesting because you don't typically think about like, I mean, 
semantics don't really matter for print, right? Uh, unless you're styling things, right? But like, you know, no one cares whether your uh, labels are wired up to your inputs correctly when you're printing something. So PDF mm. being backformed from printing and then having to kind of cludge in accessibility, like that is interesting to think about and interesting to put this, what we're about to do today in context. Yeah, I think it is. It's a, uh, it's similar to, I guess, the experience that web developers might have where when you're first learning, you might think, oh, I can just make this heading text really big and bold and my job is done. But doing that extra work so that the semantic information comes through to assistive technology, um, we can do all of that work in documents as well. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. So, um, yeah, should I go ahead and start sharing my screen? Yeah, I think so. All right. Um, so first of all, y'all, we, today we have Larry Hudson on go, go follow Larry on, on Twitter at Larry Hudson dev. Um, and yeah, then, um, I guess where should I go from here? What, what should we do to, to get started? Yeah, so I thought to get started, it would be interesting to talk about a little bit of an introduction to um, how accessibility works when it comes to PDFs. Um, so um, in HTML, um, the content itself, the HTML elements, is what is represented to um, assistive technology. Um, there's no sort of separation between the actual content and what gets represented to screen readers. And that's, that's what makes HTML a great sort of format um, when it comes to accessible information. PDF is slightly different where you've got content on the page, but there's a separate, um, there's a separate, um, section of the PDF where the tag information is. And mm. it's sort of like the tags are linked to the content on the page. Um, we could um, have a look at this um, document that I've sent through to you, this um, flyer. Yes. Um, but this is an example of a tagged PDF. Um, so we'll open up that um, PDF, um, and we'll open it up in Adobe Acrobat. Yes, that is going to open up in preview. Hang on. Open <laughs> with Acrobat. So we might be first time user experience in Acrobat. We'll see what comes up. Yeah, um, it sure is thinking about it. My computer is chugging today, um, and I don't quite know why. I restarted to... Um, there we are. Okay, cool. So we have Acrobat. We've, we've got our PDF up. Yeah. Then... Okay. Awesome. So as you can see, this is a digital representation of a printed document. Um, you can sort of tell by these columns that this is a brochure that is sort of primarily a print document. Um, but if you... See on the left-hand side how you've got that sort of sidebar with the um, icons? Yeah. If you, um, you right-click in that sidebar. I see um, tags. Yeah, you can go to the tags panel. Okay. And if you open up those um, the little arrows to expand the sort of tags tree, you'll end up sort of seeing a representation that is quite similar to HTML. Um, so sect is like a section, so it's sort of similar to a div. Um, so you've got this representation of the, um, the actual content that's in the document. Um, but as I said before, it's separate from the actual content on the page. So 
this tags panel could be totally empty while you've got all the content on the page. Mm. And that means that screen reader users or assistive technology users don't have access to the information on the page. So there's that separation um, that makes a little bit more work for people making accessible documents. Okay. It's one more thing to check. Um, so you've got to make sure this representation of the content um, is correct and is in the right order because this is what is going to be announced to screen readers. Interesting. Okay. And, and it really does have to be like top to bottom in the correct order. So like if I started moving yeah. things around, that would be like changing the DOM order as far as yeah. the screen reader user is concerned. Exactly. So you can drag things around in the tags panel and it won't affect the content on the page. But that means that the tags order can be totally wrong. Um, something, imagine if this document had 10 pages, some content on the first page could be at the end of the tags panel. And then um, a screen reader user would hear that content on the first page at the very end of the document. Mm. So, okay. yeah, um, it's quite, you can get, pretty complicated um, in terms of uh, this sort of manipulation of the tags. But you can, um, if you right click on one of the figure tags there and go properties, um, you can see the alternate text. Um, oh, okay. I can see that it's been uh, it's it's been opened read only. See that blue bar at the top. So uh, that's oh, why these. Things yeah, out. let me let me enable editing. If won't like, if anything, just so that we can actually see with a higher color contrast. And then let me reopen this. There we go. Okay, yeah. much better. So you can see the alt text is set on the figure tag. Um. So. It's sort of interesting that the um, the alternate text is applied on the tag, which is sort of separate from the content on the page. Mm -hmm. um, so I just sort of wanted to demonstrate this. The tags panel is where the information for screen readers is, basically. Okay. Um, do you think it would be worth trying this out with voiceover? Yeah, so should I do anything special to open this up, like, so that I don't have the rest of the Acrobat or inter uh, interface? Um, it might be good to just open it in preview. It okay. might be a bit simple. Let's see. All right. Uh, give it a moment to think about it. All right. And I'm going to turn voiceover on. Let's see how this goes. Mm. Uh, and... Everything's chugging along right now, but it's coming up. Mm -hmm. I need, like, hold music or something like that, you know? Exactly. Voice over on application. Fly right. fu 8 So, we've got voiceover open, and I would like to try to navigate to the image, right? Yeah. Let's see what comes up first when we Insert go page. That, Menu button. Um... Insert page. Sort of Insert page. Name. Collection. One item selected. Full screen let me, button. Let me try clicking into here document first. Group. There we go. Insert page. No. Document group. Leaving doc. Inspector. Entering. Leaving. Leaving highlights. Mm. Tomorrow. Search. Leaving. Leaving collection. Entering document group. Doc. Document group. Page one. Heading level two. Creating PDF slash UA. PDF slash UA conformance places stringent demands on both the document authoring software and the author. Ah. So it did start at the beginning there, interestingly. Yeah, but it, it started on the left-hand side. Um, yeah, that's interesting because when we looked at the tags before, um, the PDF UA on the right-hand side, I think that was the heading level one. Mm -hmm. um, maybe if you keep navigating down, yeah. um, we'll see... Authors, logical reading order, include alternative text for 
images and avoid accessibility errors such as convey information with color alone. Smartphone with software that has reader view available image heading level 2 using PDF slash UA. PDF slash UA conformance enables a top tag with the alt text there. Yeah. Heading level smartphone with with a typo in it. Yeah. Yep, smartphone. Um, Interesting. Uh, yeah. Okay. It actually, yeah. So we could have a look in the tags again just to make sure um, what sort of order is there. Absolutely. Let me let me turn off voiceover real quick, and we'll we'll give that a shot. Voiceover off. Okay. Um, document. Oh, yeah. So the, I'm guessing art is article, right? Yeah, that's right. That's all of this stuff. And then this is the section that uh, <laughs> there is there is a pink outline that I can just make out, but it's indicating this right-hand side here. Um, yeah. Figure. And the small little section down the, the side of this image here. Yeah. So... Oh, it's, Interesting. Um, where are we? Oh, we're we're down here. Um, yep. This doesn't. This can't be all of the tags in the document, though, right? Because like we're gonna further we're down. To... Um, those sections. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. Hang on. So, yeah, you can you can nest um sections the same way as um, HTML. So there could be quite a lot of content inside a section tag. Um, hmm. Yeah, it's interesting that it read out the, um, the content on the left-hand side of the page when it wasn't the first tag. Um, in our testing, <clears throat> um, there can be inconsistencies in the um, PDF reader programs and how they announce the content um, to screen readers. So, <clears throat> so um, it might be that there are some inconsistencies between how preview is announcing the content to voiceover yeah. um, versus how maybe Acrobat would announce it. Okay. Um, I feel like that's that's maybe one other downside of PDFs when it comes to accessibility. I feel like the um, the ways that web browsers um, present the sort of accessibility tree to screen readers is more reliable than PDF reader programs. Mm -hmm. um, so that's maybe what we're running into here. Um, yeah, we probably could try, um, I'm thinking we could try to read it out using Acrobat and see if there's a difference. Okay. Yeah. Is um, there, is there I know the interface is more complicated. Yeah. Is there a way navigating. to just pop directly to just view, viewing it? Um, there is a read out loud read... feature, which is interesting. Oh, so the read out loud function, um, this is a sort of like a source of annoyance. Um, so uh, in PDFs, um, there's the tags panel, and then there's the content on the page. And the order of the content on the page is sort of like visual layers. So um, there's an order of actual content on the page. And if something comes after something before, it's visually on top of that one that came before. And the read out loud function here uses that order to announce, um, to read it out loud. Mm. Whereas this technology uses the tags order. Um, 
I've I've seen quite a few sort of forum threads of people saying, why don't they just read out the same thing? Why doesn't it's yeah, it, that's sort of like an annoying acrobat thing. Um, Adobe using a different way to um, read out the content in that way. Um, there's maybe a chance that preview is reading out that order. Um, mm. That's why the stuff on the left-hand side was being read out first. Um, in, the te- in the sidebar of Acrobat, um, if you right-click again on the icons, there's another one called reading order or just order. Okay. Um, and so if you scroll up to page one. Uh, let's see. Yeah. That looks like one right here. One is... Oh, that's like an item line. Okay, so one is the image. Two and then is... it goes okay. Yeah. So it might be that um, it it might be that previews reading out that um, order as well. But mm. and when I clicked in, sure in, when I clicked in, I might have clicked directly into two, and uh, might have. Okay, interesting. Maybe. Interesting. Yeah. I guess it's just the fact that there are two ways of doing it. I guess maybe some P- PDF reader programs go the other way. Um, but I'm pretty sure in the sort of PDF spec, the tags are what um, assistive technology is supposed to read out. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Uh, should we maybe keep talking about, um, I guess, HTML and PDF? Yeah. 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 So in my sort of work of um, trying to uh, make sure documents are accessible and making sure information is shared in an accessible way, we're trying to head towards more information being shared on web pages. Um, In our work um, at the Information Access Group, we work with clients who are trying to share information, usually in documents. So sharing an annual report or a fact sheet or um, that sort of thing. Um, And we're trying to encourage more of our clients to share information in a web page because if information is shared on a web page, you get, um, you know, a responsive, experience so Mm -hmm. if someone's looking at something on a phone screen uh, the content will reflow to suit their device Um, the web page will load faster than a pdf because a pdf file needs to be downloaded completely before it opens Mm. so if you're on a if you're on a pretty uh poor um connection maybe you've got bad reception on your phone um it might take quite a while for say a five megabyte PDF file to download. Yeah. Yeah. If you're just trying to get some information, yeah, that might be long enough that you give up basically. I think about Uh, that at like restaurants, like, you know, cause you know, in, in these times, of course, um, it seems like every restaurant has the QR code that you scan to pull up their menu, but what they put like their, their menu is a PDF. Right. And I don't know about you, but for whatever reason, it seems like I always seem to have poor reception in a restaurant. And so I'm here like trying to pull up a menu, a thing that I need, right, to be able to use this restaurant that I'm at. Um, And like I'll scan their QR code and then it takes like two or three minutes for their menu to come up. Um, Yeah. It just seems like that's... that kind of like is a sucky experience all around because then then they can't like update it as easily for when they've got like new items new dishes or anything like that yeah i think that's a perfect example so that sort of shows that maybe they've gone and got a menu made by a graphic designer mm-hmm. and they thought you know this is a physical menu uh yeah the graphic designer also sent us a pdf so we'll put that on our website um, I would say 
you know, uh, most of the time they're probably not thinking about it being an accessible PDF um, because it is primarily a print sort of uh, document. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's a perfect example of, I guess, what we would, I guess what we're trying to show is um, a better way of taking that content, so whether it's menu items for a restaurant or something like that, and publishing a web page, but also publishing a PDF so that you have that print version if you need mm -hmm. it. Um, so yeah, it might actually be interesting. You could probably make um, an example of a uh, restaurant menu, which yeah. is a web page. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is it worth um, getting into that now? Let's do it. Maybe the practical side. Yeah, let me, I'm going to just nuke everything and we're just going to make us a, a website, right? Yeah. So, um, before, before we get into 11T, I could give you a little bit of a, a intro to prints. Okay. Um, so prints is a software that, um, it's sort of provided as like a command line utility um, interface sort of thing um, to convert a HTML web page to a PDF. Okay. Um, and the nice thing about that is um, because HTML is such a good basis for um, semantics and that sort of thing, when it converts the HTML to PDF, the semantic information comes through in the tags. So that's the big difference between um, mm. between uh, in your web browser going file, print to PDF or something like that. Um, you get uh, you get an accessible PDF um, from your sort of web page input. Um, it also lets you do quite a lot of customization. So um, if you've got a sort of a table of contents at the start of your web page, um, you can add page numbers to those links. Oh, um, ooh, so really? then it can feel a bit more like a printed document um, and things like a page number in the bottom corner, um, that sort of thing. So we can have a look at that as well. Okay. Um, so, yeah, maybe we can get started uh, making that 11T site. Um, yep. Yeah, maybe maybe we should make a restaurant menu. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I am just letting everything kind of come to. All right. Uh, and then get in it. Make this, uh, let's see, then get ignore, yep, and, and, and what is my computer doing? <laughs> it is, it is not thrilled today. All right, uh, ignore those node modules, then here we'll, we'll go in and we'll, we'll add ourselves an 11d config hmm. um i'll make a folder i'll call it source uh ooh, hello wow wow well <laughs> i've never actually seen this before what is going on on my computer today uh who, i hope ah, adobe is... has installed it Maybe might like actually a... be Adobe. Yeah. Wonder. You could probably create a uh, quit out of Creative Cloud. That's slowing things down. Yeah. Let me let me give that a shot. Uh, Adobe Cloud. But cre yeah. Yeah. It's um. It's a little bit frustrating that there aren't more um, options when it comes to. Uh, PDF 
editing software that Mm -hmm. lets you manipulate the tags. Um, I feel like Adobe are a little complacent with their position in the market, so they don't need to make uh, the interface for editing the tags much better because they've, uh, they're, you know, obviously the um, market leader. Absolutely. All right. So, yeah. So we can probably start with like making our HTML. So making the web page. Um, we I'm could, just... yeah, maybe mark down or, or yeah, we could write HTML. I think I think just for the sake of today, let's let's stick uh, with some, some good old HTML. Accessible, yes. Um, a little main tag, one full PDFs with eleven D prints. Um, then yeah. So we were talking about maybe making this like a a restaurant, right? I'll just maybe instead yeah. call this menu. Um. And let's see, maybe maybe I'll have a section in here and the, the section, what else should we have on our, our, our menu here? So we could have, yeah, maybe breakfast items. Yeah. Do um, breakfast. Let's make probably an unordered list, I'm guessing. Uh, actually, yeah. you know what? We'll want prices, so... The DL. Add to, you know? Oop, not CR. <laughs> That's not a thing. ET. There we go. All right. Um, and this will be like, you know, pancakes. And we'll have pancakes be, I don't know. We'll make it like $4.99. Um, and everything will just be $4.99. Let's do sure. waffles. Um, just it's great, quite cheap uh, for Australian prices. Mm, I feel like mm-hmm. our cafes, uh, everything is like you know twenty one dollars or more. Um, mm. uh, let's see what's a, another good breakfast item. Um, oatmeal. All right, cool. Awesome. Um, and. I would probably go in and add in some IDs. Like if I'm making this like a, a, a proper website with all the accessibility goodness and then Aria labeled by equals breakfast. And yeah. you would do similar for lunch and dinner. Um, but okay. I remember reading that the section tag actually isn't any different to a div if you don't add on that label, is that right? That's correct, yeah. Um, It is not registered as a region landmark for assistive technologies until it has a quote-unquote accessible name, um, just like a label or a title, which you can get with ARIA label, ARIA labeled by, or um, the title attribute. But you have to have one of those three, otherwise it's not a meaningful landmark and it's more or less a div. Scott O'Hara had a wonderful article about that uh, recently, yeah. the, the, the chat. Um, mm-hmm. Real quick and, and drop that in there. Uh, in the meantime, right. what would be next for our little menu here? So, um, we could uh, maybe put in something like our opening hours or something like that, just to make yeah. it feel a bit more like a menu. Yeah, totally. Um, all right. Uh, so some opening hours. Yeah. H two hours. Duration. And because why not? We're gonna make this another DL. Um, yeah. I think we've got to check in Fair Friday. You you what? <laughs> Check in Fair Friday. The Friday, yes, 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 we do. Um, 
uh yeah it's just gonna be closed every day except the friday uh so this is uh <laughs> sun monday um and mm. you can you get know, pretty like, complicated with time zones on tuesday yeah you know it's it's important um <laughs> to wednesday there we go um go we're gonna make this through friday um weekend howdy howdy lunch dev welcome to the party we are uh doing some pdf goodness um all right and then uh this is also weekend um and we are open only open through fridays okay Cool, so we've got ourselves a, a nice little DL. And I'm realizing this might have actually been a bit of a put gun because I don't know if PDFs have any semantics that uh, correspond to the details list. So that might be interesting to see. Well, exactly, it will be interesting. So um, what we can do, um, I could show you the quick way or the slow way. Um, okay. Because... I've uh, I created an Eleventy plugin that makes it a bit easier to um, sort of uh, generate the PDF um, after the Eleventy build process happens. All right. Um, maybe we can give the plugin a go, um, and then I could maybe talk through what it's doing. Yeah. So the. The plugin is actually just on GitHub, so I might send you the link. Okay. Um, In chat, though, so it's it's just on your GitHub, right? Yeah. So I've just sent that through in the Zoom chat. Yeah. Um. I actually have closed that, and I don't really want to mess with my Zoom setup right now. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, Larry Hudson Dev. And is this your? Uh, just, just Larry Hudson. Larry Hudson, got it. And then it's eleven T hyphen. Uh, oh, all good. So it's eleven T hyphen plugin hyphen prints hyphen PDF. Okay. All right, and let me stick that in the chat as well. There we are. All right. So, 11 so plugin that's... prints PDF. Okay. So, that's got installation instructions there. So, mm. um, yeah, just passing in that GitHub URL works pretty well. Okie doke. And you know what? I actually uh, I used yarn earlier, so let me use yarn oh, yep. again. And my computer will think about this. Yeah. So this is using um, Levity in conjunction with Prince, and you mentioned earlier that Prince was the the tool that converts your web pages your semantic web pages ideally into tagged pdfs yeah okay yeah so um prints is a uh it's software that it's a little expensive if you want to use it for commercial use um mm -hmm. but there isn't really anything that i've found that is as reliable in um generating accessible pdfs with those tags intact okay. um there is a there's an api service um which uses prints in the back end that's called um doc raptor um so that while prints i think you have to pay something like three thousand dollars as a one-off fee um Dang. that um doc raptor um service 
I think it's a monthly fee of um, twenty dollars for mm. a certain amount. Yes, so that might actually be more. Um, yeah, more uh, practical. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. So yeah, we can start using that plugin. Fire. I think the way that Eleventy makes it possible to make these plugins is I'm always really impressed with how um, Zach and the team have sort of thought out the sort of architecture of the Eleventy project. Yes. Because um, I haven't really, I haven't done any um, NPM package development other than a couple of Eleventy plugins, and I just. Yeah, it was such a nice experience of mm -hmm. being able to take functionality from your 11T config file and make it its own little package. I find it, yeah, really rewarding. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I love, I, I just love that um, plugins really are just composable 11 configs. Like, that's incredible. Uh, the mental model there is so strong. Yeah, exactly. So um, in the, when we add that plugin, we've got to pass um, a sort of configuration object um, afterwards. And we need to tell um, the path of the web page that we want to convert to PDF. So, so um, if you go back, yeah, so paths to render, that's an array. Um, All right. And, and each thing in that array um, is an object with a HTML path and an output path. So, um, uh, so can I just, just do slash for my index here? Yeah. Yeah, you okay. can. Output path. I'm just going to call this menu.pdf. Yeah. Okay. Um, just check in the example. It might need a slash on the start. No, Opera, don't. Don't. It's too late. Uh, might need a, a <laughs> slash on the... Oh, okay, I see. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, the way that prints works, um, you give it a URL, and in the sort of command line interface, it will go to that URL and mm -hmm. generate a PDF. So mm. what this plugin is doing is sort of spinning up a temporary web server okay. based on your output folder and then going to that path that you provided there and generating a PDF there. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess the... The nice thing about prints is that you can point it at any web page. So okay. um, the that means that it could pretty much fit into whatever sort of technical stack you use. Um, it doesn't mean that you need to use 11T. I just found mm -hmm. 11T was a nice, simple demo, I guess. Okay, very cool. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, we can try running the build command. Yes, which I need to add to my package JSON. I did not do that. Um, but uh, there we go. Build. This is going to be 11D. And mm. dev. This is going to be 11D dash s serve. How excited are you for the new? Uh, uh, how excited are you for the new 11D dev server? Yeah, I saw that. Um, what what are the main benefits of the new server? Um, it first of all, so the the old server relied on. Uh, we'll we'll have to take a look at that. Uh, the the old server relied on browser sync, which um, didn't work well for like, like if, if a a page was not found, right? It like it wouldn't hot reload a 404. Um. Also, uh, it absolutely needed to have a body tag. Uh, 
um, which made it really difficult to like onboard new people into the the body there. Um, yeah, I think this might actually be. Line forty three. It says. Right. Uh, oh, is this? Uh, oh, it might be line forty three of the plugin. Okay. Uh, oh, so it might. It might be relying on um your output folder. So maybe setting um output in your configuration. Okay. Output uh send that to there we go. Okay. Yeah, try let's try that again now. There we go. All right. We've got ourselves a very little PDF, uh, which I should not be opening in VS Code. Um, <laughs> but let me pop this open in Finder, and then we'll we'll take a look um, at the build here. There we go. So it is it is coming up now. What's up, Travis? Good to, good to see you. We uh we we've made ourselves a, a handy little uh PDF um using prints. I see it's got a little uh watermark, which is which is fun. Um but what's significant about this PDF from, from what I understand is that it's already been tagged with all the PDF level semantics so that screen reader users, other assistive technology users, can actually navigate this and get like semantics rather than just a bunch of text. Exactly. So maybe let's open that up in Acrobat and see what those tags look like. Do it. Um, I'm interested to see what the DL tag comes out as. Yeah, it might not. not it might not have worked. Yeah. Um, let's see. Was that's the little tags? Ooh, beach balling. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Prince, Prince will add a watermark. Um, for um free free use mm. um so um i guess they allow you to use prints uh for non-commercial use and to sort of test it out um so yeah it's good for this sort of um experimentation yeah so what we're looking at here is the order panel um but maybe we can have a look at the tags panel yes um, yes Okay. Uh, right. What is L? I mean, that seems to be our DL. Oh, list, right? L would yep. be, it's treating it as a, probably a generic list. So. Uh, list item, label, yeah, so, and list body. Yeah, so this is actually an interesting example. Um, in PDFs, um, you don't have UL for unordered list or OL you have an L for a list tag, and then each list item has a label. Um, if you did have a unordered list with bullets, I think the bullet symbol would come out as the label. Oh, interesting. Um, so in a way, this actually has presented the semantics in a pretty good way, I think. Interesting. Um, yeah. So... Yeah, that's that's generating our PDF. Okay. Um, also, I'm noticing might... like H2s, so our heading level semantics get conveyed. Very neat. Yeah. So um, what we could do is um, add some sort of um, print specific CSS. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm just thinking probably having like columns. Okay. Yeah. Um, but we could also, there are um, specific CSS rules that um, that prints relies on, sort of like specific um, CSS keywords um, that can affect the prints output. Um, so we can add some CSS, maybe in just a style tag or 
when you add a style tag, can you can you say a media query um, so that it's just the print media query? Let's see if we can add. Hang on. Is that it? Will that do it? Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. Um, style tag media attribute. Don't lead me astray, DuckDuckGo. Hoping MDN has something. W3 Schools is the first that's come up. Uh, hey, look at that. Okay. Interesting. Hey. Like, I knew you could, when you link a style... I almost knocked over my drink. Uh, when you link a style sheet in, you can say, like, media equals print. So it's good to know that you can do that for style tags as well. That makes proving this out a little easier. Okay, so we've got print-specific yeah. styles. Yeah. Um, so I might send you uh, a link. Uh, so Prince's documentation... Um, if you go to printsxml.com, yes, um, they've got some pretty good documentation on what's in CSS. This is called paged media. Um, so they've got some pretty good uh, guidelines on how to sort of uh, lay things out in the PDF. Um, but most of the um, regular CSS um, that you might use uh, will probably, it, it's pretty consistent how it comes through to the PDF. Mm -hmm. So you could probably lay out columns similar to how you would do it in HTML. Okay. Uh, so you I could like... use, you could, I don't think CSS grid works just yet but I know that Flexbox does um, in terms of layout. Um, and then we can have a look at that paged media. Uh, yeah. Uh, flex direction row, I guess. I actually don't do a whole lot of grid without grid. Um, <laughs> but... Yeah. I'll spin up the, the dev server, I suppose. Um, play around with this. Yeah. So that's the other nice thing about um, 11T. Um, the PDF will regenerate each time you make a change to a source file. So because mm. it's attaching to after 11T's build process, you get yes. this sort of nice um, experience of uh, making changes while developing and having it regenerate. Um, That's very cool. Uh, 11 is a great fit for that. Love that workflow. Yeah. It's, it's thinking about those print styles. Um, okay, it is nasty, but you know what I'm actually <laughs> going to do is I'm going to uh, go in and add in some, some uh, divs um, into my, my DLs here. Would you want the um the sections to be columns? Oh, so like we we have the the menu on the left. I see. I see. Yeah. Hey, what's the? What do you think the best way to do that is? Hmm. We could do a container around the sections. Yeah. Class equals container. Right. Ooh. Was that out? Um, Travis is advocating for bedrock layout. He's absolutely right, of course. <laughs> uh, okay. Container. Display flex. And so, if you um, if you hyperlink to the PDF um in the HTML, we could actually click on it and have it open in Chrome. Ooh. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's Rather do it. than having a look at the print preview, yeah. Twitter. 
Riff. This is going to be, uh, we called it menu.pdf. I'll put download PDF. I'll be very explicit there. This, yeah. this should do it. Uh, let it you know, re-download there, but okay. So And one, one more thing that we could do is maybe add a class to that download link so that it doesn't show up in the print version. Okay. Is there, so, um, there yeah, maybe making a now? class. Okay. So maybe if we made like a utility class, which is like um, print hidden or something. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Uh, then okay. all we need to do is just display none. Cool. All right. Uh, the PDF doesn't hot reload though, right? Uh, no. So you'll need to, you, I think you can just hit refresh. Okay. It's not the world's prettiest thing, but okay. <laughs> so we could maybe use, um, uh, the space between, um, with the justify content property on the flex container. By content space between okay. Um, just give this an old refresh. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Very, very so neat. you can sort of see how Prince is using the CSS to lay out the page, um, which is pretty nice coming from, I guess the majority of my work is um, taking documents that are Microsoft Word or Adobe InDesign and making mm -hmm. accessible PDFs. So it's it's quite refreshing to use CSS yeah. to actually lay out print documents. Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of it. So, I guess one more thing just to sort of demonstrate what prints can do would be maybe adding like a page number at the bottom. Um, yeah. I guess you don't really something. need a page number here, but maybe we could just, um, we could add some content to the footer, maybe just to, um, I don't know, maybe to, uh, I'm trying to think of content that you would want in the PDF that you wouldn't need on the web page. How about some lorem ipsum? <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Um, yeah. Paragraph around this. Um, all right. So we want this to show up in the PDF. Um, but we don't want it to show up on the website. Well, well, I'm thinking, you know, something like a page number in the bottom corner of oh, a PDF. Okay, yeah. Is is something that um, I guess it's not that relevant when you've got a one-page PDF, and mm -hmm. in a way, you wouldn't want to hide content on one version, so. Maybe in this case, we don't really need to add anything yeah. that is PDF-specific. Um, but that paged media page um, on the prints documentation is a sort of a good intro to how you would use those CSS keywords to um, add page numbers at the bottom. You can um, You can also... If your document includes a bunch of, um, say, heading level two sections, you could um, set the current sort of section title and have that in the footer, just if you were mm. making something that was a bit more like a book, I guess. Okay, yeah, yeah. Already starting to yeah. think about this in terms of like ebooks. That would be very neat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so. Um, I, uh, I've made an example um, repo um, to sort of demonstrate this way of doing things, okay. um, which 
in 11T, the content is in separate markdown files, and then they're generating separate web pages, but then the PDF pulls in those separate content sections into the one PDF. Um, so it might be worth linking to that. Yes. Um, you have a link yeah. to that. Um... So that's that'll be in my GitHub. Um, might even be that same, uh, yeah, 11T prints PDF example. So uh, what that's sort of taking advantage of is um, 11T makes it possible to write your content in one place and then actually generate multiple output files. So, okay. um, yeah. so what that's doing is um, you've got separate um, output pages for the separate um, sections of the content, but then there's another template which is just called PDF content, okay. and that's the web page that becomes the PDF. Mm. So, yeah, I can quickly show you um, how that works together. Once we uh, install the entirety of Node. 10,000 dependencies. It's That's funny a... how, how we're, I don't know, we, we, make, we try to make simple things using the web and then there's actually 10,000 individual little packages that are, it's a little bit of a house of cards, but. Yeah. It means that we can, you know, think about the bigger picture stuff, I guess. Mm -hmm. All right. Just try not to think about it. <laughs> well, and also I do, like, I'm okay adding, like, that complexity when it comes to the, like, back end. It's once we start, like, pushing that complexity to the front end, like, the, the client, that I start to get much more nervous. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, sure I guess Levity makes it so easy to just, yeah, ship that plain sort of HTML. Um, ideally, you'd probably have a little bit more styling than what we've included, but mm -hmm. um, keeping it simple is always good. So if you have a look in that um, SRC folder there. Yep. Um, uh... So you'll see... There we are. Um, those uh, those markdown files are the content, um, okay. and then that PDF content dot njk um, file is sort of pulling in the, those um, separate content pages um, and rendering them in this one page. Um, so if you've got that, uh, dev server running, you could actually yes. have a look at what that output looks like. Got it. All right. So I'll refresh this cause we're on 8080 again and then download PDF. Yeah. Hi, so... Tina. Welcome. Welcome to the stream, buddy. Uh, my cat is here. Um, all right. Ooh, okay, okay. So you can, yeah. you can see you've got a bit of the, the pagination going on. Um, yeah. Every individual piece of content, each of those markdown files has made its way in here, which is great. Yeah. Um, and it's setting the current section title to use in the bottom left corner. Um so yeah prince has this sort of um i like how it sort of extends css in a way it's it's not making you do things in a completely different way um mm -hmm. it's quite sort of friendly if you if you're um comfortable with css um 
just at the top of that um, document, I've got um, a table of contents, which includes um, page numbers. So um, what Prince is doing there is those uh, hyperlinks um, are linking to an ID in the HTML and Prince is getting the page number of the target and then using it in the, um, the rendered PDF. So if you go back into VS Code, you could have a look at the CSS file there. Yes, that is the wrong. Uh, all right, yeah, so peek at the oh, that's extensions. <laughs> Welcome back, Tuna. Um, okay, CSS print, yeah. So I've got a couple of sort of uh utility classes there, um, to make sure that the heading level twos have a um, page break before them. Okay. Um, and yeah, it looks a little sort of funky, the syntax that they end up using. Um, but what it's doing is um, it's setting sort of a variable, um, which has the name doc title there, and then you can use that elsewhere. So Okay. It's setting the doc title variable with the content oh. of the um of the element with the ID doc title. Got it. Okay. Uh yeah, yeah. cuz we have right here you have an h1 with ID doc title and then in here you're saying take that h1 with that ID and use its text contents as a print variable doc title that we'll get mm. to use. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> and and then here if you, you scroll go. up a little, um, the TOC uh, links where it says target counter. Yeah. Um, it's sort of taking the. Um, the href attribute okay. of that hyperlink and getting the page number based on that ID mm. that it's pointing to. So, yeah, this can be a little confusing if you're not uh, familiar with it, but, um, yeah, the Prince documentation has some really good examples for sort of getting started with this sort of extra level of customization. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um I think the thing that the thing that I'm trying to move towards is being able to write content in one place and mm -hmm. make a website and a PDF from the same content and making the most of the user experience sort of benefits of making a website. So yes. Um, this example website uses a media query to check if you prefer a dark color scheme. Um, and it uses, um, just little things like, um, if you're on a mobile screen, the navigation will stay fixed to the top of the screen. So little things like that, um, yeah. make a web page a better experience. So we want to like make the most of that while still offering a print version. You, That's the sort of direction I'd like to head in. You mentioned the like the developer experience of building websites and like it occurs to me the uh, kind of a big thing these days is like deploy previews for instance is a great Netlify feature, right? Um, that uh, for anyone who's unaware, um, you like you have your project hooked up to like Netlify, and anytime you push up a branch and open a, a pull request, Netlify spins up a version of the site like specific to that branch or to that commit. Um, so if you're 
PDFs are tied, like generated from the web pages, like they like generated from that content. Then now every deploy preview generates a PDF um, specific mm. to the web contents. Um, and so yeah, now it's just like your PDF changes in sync with your website's Git source control. That is incredibly cool, man. Yeah. Update uh, like if if we're doing a restaurant menu, right? Uh, you push up a change to the menu, um, and the PDF updates at the same time. That's so cool. Yeah, exactly. So you sort of get those things for free in a way when you're fitting tools into um, the static site generation and the deploy previews that Netlify give you. So if you're going in this way anyway, you get mm -hmm. those experience sort of goodies for free which is pretty cool absolutely wow okay yeah very neat um one other thing that i'm sort of excited about is 11t has um made it possible to run 11t programmatically so um running 11t as a part of a bigger maybe a node project um maybe a web interface that is backed by some uh, other CMS or something like that, where you can publish 11T sites programmatically um, and incorporate the PDF output into that. So building a bit of like a sort of a document website publisher sort of thing, mm -hmm. it becomes a lot more possible when, yeah, when 11T, when 11T is this flexible, yeah, it opens up those possibilities, which is really cool. Absolutely. Um, excellent. Is there more you wanted to show off, Larry? Um, I think that's pretty much it for this demo, yeah. Okay. Well, excellent. Thank you so much for showing this off. This is incredibly cool. And instantly I'm like, I need to start like making PDFs of my blog posts because obviously people need <laughs> PDFs of blog posts. Um, yeah, it, I don't, just when the tools make things this easy, like why not, you know, um, just yeah. incredibly cool. Um, so thank you yeah. so much. Um, I, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, recommend people follow y'all, uh, follow you on um, Twitter. Uh, Larry Hudson Dev. Um, awesome. go, go give go give Larry that that semantics love. Um, yeah, yeah, Michael Chan in the chat is saying that this is a like a killer fit for an ebook, and absolutely, yeah. um, very cool. Um, are there other things that you're working on? Things you want to promote uh, while you're on? I don't have too much to promote. I'd like to say. Um, like, thank you for being so welcoming. Um, and Chan as well in the lunch uh, Discord. Um, everyone's been so welcoming. I'd recommend if if there are viewers here that haven't uh, tried getting involved in the Discord communities, so lunch.dev and also the front-end horse communities are just really lovely, wholesome places to hang out and like talk about web stuff and even yeah i've just been so impressed with the sort of community building stuff that's going on awesome well thank you so much for being here larry and um thank you all for for being here as well um we had a, a nice homely little chat uh going on um and Stick around, we are going to find someone to raid also next Tuesday at 1 p.m. Central, so an hour before our normal time. Uh, we're going to have Patrick Holsey on. Patrick is the creator of Lighthouse CI, and he is going to be talking to us about debugging web performance. So super excited for that one. Um, and, and yeah, thank you all for, for being here. Have a great rest of your Thu Friday. Bye, y'all. Awesome.